All right, I thought I'd give you guys an update on a little project I'm playing with. I'm trying to uh, uh, kind of bring my my boat into the digital world without having to replace all of the equipment. So kind of uh, making analog things talk with uh, digital displays and adding a couple of components. The main part of it is going to be a Raspberry Pi, which is it's basically a mini computer. Now this cable here is just, uh, this is all, all of this section over here is just for uh, while I'm testing and making things, uh, testing out the different controls and sensors I want to use. Basically, once it's all set up how I want it, any wires would be wired directly to the Raspberry Pi and then the sensors. This is a breadboard that, like I said, is kind of just for testing. This sensor here is a temperature sensor. This one back here is called a Hall Effect sensor. It basically senses magnetic fields. Obviously what this one does, this one I'm going to be using as an anchor counter or a, a road counter. Yeah, most uh, commercial uh, anchor road and chain counters have magnets on the gypsy so that when the gypsy spins, there's a magnet or two magnets on the gypsy and as they pass by this, it basically just counts. All of this is going to be wired up to a small, probably four inch or so digital display up on the flybridge. That's actually a touch panel display, so I'll be able to pay out road or pull road in. Alright, so again, what the hall sensor does is it detects a uh, magnetic field. So, if you wanted to put an anchor out, you know, obviously this is a momentary switch, so you would hold this down and it would count each time, see the flash is each time the magnet passes by as it's on the gypsy. So then it's counted up four feet. But if you hit the button, the reset button three times, it resets everything. I, I did it for three times, that way if you accidentally pushed it, then it wouldn't uh, <laughs> reset everything. So then let's say that you wanted to pay out 25 feet as the you hit the auto payout the gypsy starts spinning and it counts as it goes by it works its way sorry i've got it set for 25 foot increments so so then you put out 25 feet that's showing how much anchor is out how much chain is out and then the auto deploy resets itself and then if you wanted to bring it back in, I don't have the uh, uh, bringing the chain back in automated because I thought that was something I would want to have my finger on the button for, uh, you know, so that you can let off when there's too much tension, things like that. But if you wanted to bring it in, you would hold the button down. And then as the magnet passes by, it starts counting the chain back down. So this is the uh, display that will be on the 4-inch touchscreen or so. Uh, basically, you know, anchor in, obviously pulling the anchor up, anchor out. This shows how much chain is out. This gives you an auto-deploy, so you could hit, uh, in 25-foot increments, hit the button. It would start paying chain out until it gets to that level. Uh, obviously, a stop and then a reset resets the counters and the auto deploy depending on uh you know if, if a sensor if a count gets off or or if anything happens it'll reset everything this auto deploy also uh, let's say you have a hundred foot of chain out and you want to add 25 foot you can do it here so then it'll count out 25 more feet of chain and then uh, once this reaches 125 then this will clear, the anchor will stop. Uh, both of these, the anchor in and the anchor out, are momentary switches, so you have to actually hold the switch in, and then when you let off, the chain stops going in or, or coming in or going out. One of the other things that I've incorporated in this, uh, there's a GPS 
puck that attaches to the Raspberry Pi. I don't have it uh, plugged in right now. But uh, one of the other things that I've set up is some conditions. So if uh, basically checklists so that if, uh, let's say, you know, I'm underway and uh, it's approaching sunset, I can, uh, through the conditions on this uh, flow, I can make the um, a checklist appear. So, you know, let's say this would all be automated, but or it already is automated. But 30 minutes before sunset, only on that small display, this checklist would appear. Uh, just reminding me, make sure my navigation lights are on, the deck's clear, panel lights are on, whatever else I want to have, make sure I have happen at sunset. Uh, once I check each of those off and hit done, then it returns back to the normal uh, uh, windless control screen. So far, I've got a couple of them set up. So uh, sunset and anchor, uh, sunset underway, and just to show you what they're like, I only have anchor lights set up right now for sunset and anchor, and I may not add anything else. But that, I can have it uh, pop up on that display, and then I'm probably going to have, for like sunset and anchor, I'll probably have... Um, a push bullet notification or something like that go to my phone so that if I'm not up at the uh, helm then I still get a notification on my phone to remember to remind me to you know, turn the anchor light on or, or whatever else there is that I, I need to do uh, this once I get the encryption set up I can also access everything through node red any any buttons like this or any uh, uh, buttons in the flows themselves I'll be able to access that remotely. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to do of that at this point, but uh, I'll be able to get it remotely as well. Okay, so I've connected the uh, the GPS puck so that I could give you a, a, a little bit of a example of what the chart plotter side of this looks like. And if you've got an AIS receiver, uh, whether it be a, a commercial one or uh, or a commercial transceiver or an uh, uh, aftermarket which you can get the plug-in ones for this for 40 or 50 bucks just a receiver uh, AIS targets will show up on the uh, on the chart plotter and uh, you'll be able to see that they won't obviously be able to see you because you only have a receiver not a transceiver but uh, this is the chart plotter uh, that's uh, you can turn lots of different layers on with it, but the chart plotter for it's called Open Plotter, or I'm sorry, the chart, chart plotter is called Open C CPN, but the uh, software is uh, Open Plotter. Um, typically, it's not as cramped as looking like this just because I'm doing it on this laptop screen remotely. Um, it, it doesn't normally look like this. I'm probably going to add. Uh, a 10 or 12 inch touch screen uh, up at the flybridge so that I can have this chart plotter and, and main control panel up as well and you can set wind and tides and uh, there's a, a boat uh, a logbook feature uh, lots of different plugins for it um, it's a pretty neat uh, pretty neat chart plotter especially for something that's uh, open source and free to use so uh, but I'm going to keep playing with it, and I will uh, hopefully have something going here in the next couple of weeks as far as, a, a, depending on whether, the uh, I'll have it mounted up on the, uh, the, the hall sensor mounted up on the uh, bow with the uh, uh, anchor. I'm probably, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to get it, uh, I'm thinking about having an a, a enclosure made for the uh, the hall sensor section uh, 3d printed and then uh, run the wires up I'm not sure if I'm gonna mount this Raspberry Pi up at the flybridge or I'm gonna have it right at the, uh, the bow of the boat or not I haven't decided that part yet these Raspberry Pis are so cheap you can get one for 30 bucks or so and it's a mini computer so it does lots of stuff I'm thinking at this point I'll have my um, obviously windless controls the, the 
temperature, uh, quite a few different GPS uh, functions. It, it'll show, uh, well, let's give you an example of some of the stuff that's already pre-built. Most of this is geared more towards sailboats, but this is the kind of information that it'll uh, bring in. And then uh, wind gauges, and obviously this doesn't have the information because I don't have the uh, sensors. Uh, this is, there's a, uh, I think a $25 uh, dongle basically that uh, allows you to connect to um, uh, NEMA 2000 network so that any of your existing gauges will uh, will pick up in that as well. Uh, there's lots of different uh, things that will automatically translate over. This will give you an idea of some of the uh, some of the stuff. Again, the resolution here is so crazy just because of how I'm uh, screen capturing this. Uh, autopilot uh, integrates in with it. Uh, you can share your um, uh, Wi-Fi signal if you have that on there. This is for controlling uh, the pins on the uh, Raspberry Pi itself. So ideally I'm going to have just this little board here with this sensor. I'm probably going to have a, a, a little enclosure, uh, probably three inches tall by a, an inch wide and a half an inch deep, uh, print it up, and then I'll mount this up in the tip of that and then fill it with some uh, formal coating or uh, epoxy or something so that it keeps it weather tight. It only needs three wires, a power, a ground, and then a signal wire. Uh, the Raspberry Pi itself only needs 5 volts. This sensor works off of 5, the temperature works off of 3.5, and, and, and the Raspberry Pi splits all that up and gives you those connections. So uh, it, it's a pretty neat setup, uh, lots of potential, but I will uh, update you guys when I uh, have more, uh, more to show.